This camera is an excellent demonstration of how simple a camera can be designed. This style of camera is a continuation of the traditions of the Kodak Box camera line, which made photography popular with its slogan, you press the button, we do the rest. When I first held it, I thought it was a boring camera, but after I accidentally opened it and got to know it better, I became interested in its simplicity and easy access to the main mechanisms. Later we'll also open it and look at these mechanisms inside, but first let's see how simple it is on the outside. On the front, you can see three lenses, and a photography beginner might think this is a serious professional camera, although the quality of the box itself might make you doubt this. However, the two upper lenses are just two viewfinders, one for portrait camera orientation and the second for landscape orientation. The lenses in these viewfinders are very basic, their quality is mediocre, and later you'll be surprised at how primitive everything looks inside. In the center of the camera is the lens, and an experienced photographer can immediately see that this is an inexpensive and very simply designed lens. As far as I understand, it consists of one classic type of lens called a meniscus, and has a focal length of 105 millimeters. However, its low quality is compensated by the large frame format. Often, photos from such cameras were made without enlargement, simply by contact method on small size photo paper, which means the photos turned out quite sharp. For those viewers who know at least a little about photography, a logical question arises. How do you set the shutter speed, aperture and focus on this camera? Let's start with the fact that there is no focusing here. The lens is set to a hyperfocal distance and provides sharpness from about 3 meters to infinity. You just press the shutter release button and take a picture. By the way, the shutter release button is here at the bottom left and the shutter, as you can see, works properly despite the camera being very old as such cameras were produced in the middle of the last century. And soon you'll understand why the shutter still works. There is simply a very simple shutter mechanism. Essentially, you don't have much choice with shutter speed either. There are only two options, a short exposure marked with a dot or a long one marked with a strip. Essentially, the long exposure is the bulb exposure. In other words, the shutter is open as long as you press the button. And the short one corresponds to approximately 1 30th of a second. The camera has no focusing, almost no choice of shutter speed, but what about the aperture? The aperture selection is present here and this flap, which can be pulled out of the camera body, is responsible for changing the aperture. It has three positions. The first position corresponds to a fully open aperture. The standard value for it is 11. The second position is a closed aperture, which corresponds to a standard value of 16. And the third position is another opening with a value of 11, but with a built-in yellow filter, which is needed to enhance the contrast between the blue sky and clouds when using black and white film. Now, for the most interesting part, let's open and detach the front wall. First, let's look at the wall itself. Now you can see how the two viewfinders are arranged. They are two curved pieces of metal that act as mirrors, redirecting light from one lens to another. The front lens turns out to be just a protective filter, an ordinary round glass that protects the inside of the camera. And the most interesting thing, look how simply the shutter is designed. A short exposure is just a mode in which the shutter window passes through the lens opening. And a long exposure simply stops the shutter window near the lens opening. Note that at the very bottom, there is also a hole for a cable release. Here's how this mechanism works when using a cable release. Now, let's look again at how the aperture change and filter installation are implemented. Well, it's time to look at the camera from behind. You can see here a classic window for the frame counter of a medium format 120 film. Yes, if you wish, you can easily buy modern film and use it in this camera. It's not immediately clear how to load the film. You might think you need to break open the interior using brute force, as we did before. But no, you need to pull on this handle so that the lock loosens and we can pull out the interior. Now we can enjoy the appearance of the lens it really is very simple.
Now, the principle of loading film into the camera is clear. I don't have film at hand, but it's all very simple. The new film is placed at the bottom. Then the film is passed through here, through the back part and attached to the empty take-up spool at the top. If you're confused, the logic is simple. The film winding handle is at the top, which means that's where the empty take-up spool should be located, onto which you will wind the exposed film. I don't think I'll ever want to try shooting with this camera. It's immediately clear that one shouldn't expect anything outstanding from this lens, and it's better to spend film on a camera with a truly interesting lens. My channel isn't mainly about photography, but you'll often find videos on photography topics here, along with other interesting things too. So make sure to stop by and see what might interest you.